serious, what are some women's issues that are overlooked? Endometriosis. One day, you'll wake up and find a little bit of blood in your underpants. And that is the day you become a woman. Yeah no. I woke up to a scene from Godfather. Man. I got mine before I was going to bed and had a panic attack thinking I was about to die crying in the bathroom. Aussie sex education is non-existent. When I started bleeding at 11, I thought it was because I was masturbating and it had made me ill. Overheard the usual don't do that it'll make you go blind which was said to my brother. Because no one wants to acknowledge that young girls also go through sexual development. Closed bracket comma and assumed I was now dying because of it. Didn't tell anyone because I was ashamed they'd know what I'd been doing. So I started throwing away my bloody knickers. My mum found them in the bin and asked why I was doing that. Told her I was bleeding. She explained what a period was etc. It's fucked up to me that periods aren't explained to girls. Why are we so scared of girls coming of age? Why are we pretending it doesn't happen? Can we just teach girls about their bodies? Our first year in high school, age 11, in the UK, we usually get the talk. Girls and boys separated into different lecture halls. Boys get an hour long discussion about hygiene and puberty etc. Girls get the period version. My mum had already broached the subject with me, so I sort of knew what to expect. Other girls were in floods of tears at this revelation of having to deal with this horrendous monthly experience for the next 35 to 40 years. One girl fainted at the mention of blood and had to be taken outside for air. So I dread to think how she dealt with actually bleeding. You know in my school, when they used to take the girls to have a talk, BTW there was no such thing for boys. They used to tell us that they are making them watch Disney princess movies and we bought that for some reason. How bad some of the negative effects hormonal birth control can be. I was losing my mind. But my doctor brushed it off saying I was just stressed. Got off it. And instantly felt so much better. Oral contraceptive birth control pills can cause depression and very often do. PMS and PMDD aren't taken seriously enough. The depression and anxiety of PMDD are debilitating. Oral contraceptive birth control pills can cause depression and very often do. I really wish this were discussed more. I struggled with depression and anxiety for years throughout my early 20s. I stopped taking birth control and it just vanished. I almost couldn't believe the difference it made. Even my colleagues noticed how much my demeanor had improved. A lot of my friends have stopped taking it too with similar experiences none of us feel the need to go back. Additionally, my friend struggled with migraines for years and no doctor ever suggested that BC could be the cause, but she hasn't had one since she stopped taking them years ago. I don't know why nobody ever suggested it. I know the pill has been incredibly useful for women to have better control over their bodies and can be very helpful to some. I just wish they had talked through it more when prescribing. The only thing I was worried about was that I'd gain weight on them. Yes. It's completely ridiculous. I was put on birth control by my doctor at 16 because my periods were irregular and was on it until at least 30. Had horrible bouts of depression and suicidal thoughts throughout high school and into my 20s. Things got better when I switched to an explanin. But didn't truly end until I got off birth control entirely. Then it was like emerging from a fog. No one. In all my years of treatment and therapy ever suggested the birth control might be fucking with me. I wonder where my life could be now if I wasn't mentally crippled for 15 years. Hysterectomies. I'm 24 and have reoccurring fibroid tumors and have since I was a teenager. It's not typical for someone my age to have multiple and large fibroids. My largest one was 11 centimeters. They are painful and I'm about to have my second surgery to remove them. I don't want to keep doing this over and over and would like to have a hysterectomy. Yet my surgeon refuses because I'm young and might want children. If I get pregnant, I have a high risk of miscarriage. It will eat me alive if that happens to me. I'm finally getting my fallopian tubes removed in a couple weeks. I prepped by looking at every angle they might say no and even the laws in my area concerning it. I wonder if it helps to bring up that you'll sign anything absolving them of blame in that very hypothetical case or threatening to report them to the board for refusing to treat your serious medical condition. Good luck. 
PCOS. 10% of women have this, including me, which leads to diabetes, infertility, and many other problems. The biggest issue with PCOS for me, aside from previously being an ovulatory, was that I went 29 years undiagnosed because I'm nearly 5 feet 9 and 103, 110 lbs. I didn't fit the type for so many options. The education gap in phenotypes of the syndrome is unreal, and it's because education in female only issues isn't a priority. The lack of research is incredibly depressing. Doc, lose weight and the symptoms will disappear me, loses 90 pounds, still have a beard and wonky periods. Doc, Pikachu, JPG, lol. I've been diagnosed with it, but I'm not convinced I have it. I've got the beard. But my period had always been pretty damn consistent. And they didn't see any cysts, when they did the ultrasound up my hoo-ha. They just figured they were there. I had high testosterone. While on BC and spironolactone there was some decrease in facial hair. It's was still kicking air out. You don't have to have irregular periods or cysts to have PCOS. I have the irregular periods. But no cysts. I only learned this recently myself. You can also have endometriosis without serious pain. Getting off of any form of birth control is hard. This past week I had my normal yearly OBG checkup. I mentioned I wanted my IUD out. My normal doctor was out of the office, so I had to see someone else. She refused to take my IUD out because I wasn't married, and she insisted that my fiancé wouldn't want the chance of us getting pregnant. I want you to document in the chart that I requested you remove my IUD and you refused. Apostrophe. And then I want a copy of that chart because I'll be calling a lawyer from your parking lot. That's illegal. I'm confused and interested in learning. I think it's just that the doctor's denying service because of their own beliefs or thoughts or whatever. I don't know I'm not a doctor or a lawyer. There was a case in my county, Norway, a few years ago with a doctor who refused to insert IUDs because of her own beliefs. After numerous complaints from her patients, her medical license was revoked and she is not allowed to practice medicine in Norway anymore. Ever. You either treat all your patients or none at all. You either treat all your patients, or none at all. God damned right. What's sadies? It took until I scrolled three quarters of the way down the page, to find something that isn't health related. Then there was one that wasn't health related. Then it was all health related again. We really have a problem here. That sometimes you really do need that hysterectomy the doctors are refusing to give you, because they want to make sure you don't want to have more children. Same goes for getting a tubal done. My boyfriend's ex has cancer in one ovarian tube. She was a dam and she didn't want kids and they still were being dicks about it. Ultimately they removed all of it because her cancer already spread. She's alive and well, but it's so fucked. That's fucked up. What kind of doctor delays a critical medical procedure even after the patient has said that they don't want children? I mean, did he think she was immediately gonna go home? Get pregnant. Deliver a baby 9 months later, and then get an operation? <laughs> Medical issues. It took me 3 air visits and a walk-in doctor, to diagnose a raging infection in my abdomen. I was told it's all in my head. By the time it got diagnosed my bowel had almost perforated. I could have died, if I was less tenacious. I was going through maxi pads every 20 minutes or so, but couldn't get in, to see my regular doctor. He was booked up, for days. But he refused to put in a referral for Regen without seeing him. Every woman on here knows going to the air with a menstrual problem is useless. Also, likely to cost thousands. To be useless, you'll get sent home with a script for Vicodin and an ice pack. Told to use a heating pad, etc. I finally just went into his office and waited in the lobby until the gals worked me into the schedule. He wrote me a damn referral and I saw Regen the next day. Within an hour I had an ultrasound, and about an hour after, that a DX of adenomyosis, never even heard of it before that, and within a few days an emergency hysterectomy scheduled. This is how stupid women's gin problems are handled in the USA. And I was lucky, I managed to get emergency surgery within a week for uncontrollable bleeding, and my new gin's office strong armed my insurance, to get multiple miracles happen to get emergency approvals done. I will stick to that gin until I die. She saved my life.
Now that I have diagnosed endo and adeno her visits are worse. They try to attribute everything to those two. Like ma'am. I know my body and this pain is new. That's a big mood. I had a nasty kidney infection. And was like listen. This isn't my uterus. I know exactly what that bee is up to at any given time she is not shy. This is new. And I have good reason to believe it's this low. And behold I was right but also I had a kidney stone in the other kidney. Slash. In my country it's after birth care for mothers. Mental health system is fucked. Women are told the pain they are feeling is normal only to find out they need a stoma bag a month down the track. Some women have died after not being checked over properly before leaving the hospital. Edit. I don't even live in a third world country either. People are wanting to move here because of how we've handled COVID. Women suffering is generally considered normal. Painful period. Normal. Incessant vomiting during pregnancy. Normal. Postnatal pain. Normal. What did you expect? Hey. Guess what? You can have painless periods and symptoms free pregnancy. They just can't be bothered to help you. Postpartum depression it's so much more common than people think, but many mothers feel too guilty to reach out for help because they think everything is supposed to be amazing after getting the baby. Perinatal mental health disorders in general. I think people think it's only PPD. But there are a whole host of issues beyond just that. There's prenatal slash postpartum anxiety, prenatal slash postpartum OCD, and more. The OCD one is so sad in particular because it often comes with really disturbing intrusive thoughts. Frequently involving harming or sexually abusing your own infant. People are so ashamed. They don't ask for help. Bottom line, if you feel off, ask for help and don't stop asking for help until you get it, sadly. Some providers won't take patients seriously. So you must really advocate for yourself. I had PPA, anxiety, and PPOCD with my older daughter. I didn't know either were a thing until my husband convinced me to see someone for help, and I was diagnosed. By that point I hadn't driven my car in 8 months, because I was convinced my daughter's car seat would fly out of the car. And I slept on the floor by her crib, because I had convinced myself she would catch fire during the night. I once threw up in the car because we drove past a carnival and I couldn't stop the intrusive thoughts that I would drop her off a ferris wheel. Even though we had no intention of even stopping, these thoughts and paranoia felt so real. Even though I knew how ridiculous they were, I was too embarrassed to talk about them to anyone but my husband. And thank goodness he convinced me to find someone who prescribed me the right meds and gave me back the enjoyment of having a baby. In my country. Bangladesh. Women are blamed for everything wrong that happens. For example if a girl marries a guy, and after years the guy dies of a disease or something people will say the girl ate the guy meaning anyone who marries the girl will die. Another example is that when women are sexually assaulted people say stuff like why did the girl go in front of guys? Why did the girls go out at night? Why did the girl wear short dresses in front of guys? Stop this is what Asian girls need to go through. I hope one day gel blaming will come to an end. Same in rural parts of India. Autism and women. Related. ADHD and women. Yep. Diagnosed at 36. Almost all the way through a very technical graduate degree. Had no idea all sorts of self-destructive habits I have. Overeating. Watching the same movie over and over and over again. Emotional instability. Dangerous thrill seeking were basically my brain desperately trying to get the dopamine it needs. I'm on Adderall XR now. It's like I felt when I first put glasses on. Oh this is how other people experience consciousness. I almost failed college and told my therapist in college I want to things but I literally can't and I don't know why and he said I was a perfectionist and the anxiety from that made me procrastinate. I actually had undiagnosed ads, and I would lay in bed basically yelling at myself to get up every day to do stuff. So much wasted time. Same. It led to basically an existential crisis, feeling like you're not doing things you want to do and don't know why is awful. The lack of actual education about your own body. Like I didn't even know I had three holes until I was 16, and I learned it from an episode of Big Mouth. Studies have shown that most young girls around age 7 can name male genitalia, but don't have the language for their own body parts. 
There are reasons why memes exist about men not being able to find the sea and women who don't masturbate. Ladies, take control of your sexuality as soon as you're aware. It will set you free in ways you'll be thanking God for later. Figure out what you like in bed however you feel comfortable and then don't settle for less. Buy as many sex toys as you damn please and don't feel guilty to take care of yourself as much as you like. Health in general. So many medications have only been tested on men, when women can react to things very differently. I'm a dude, and this will probably get buried but, I hate the fact that, when I'm doing something with my long time gf like buying a new car, renting a new apt, comma, taking a loan etc, that people ignore my gf, and assume she is just not important. They just look at me, and talk only to me, I have to make an effort. To include her in something she should be in from the start. I feel so bad for her and try to amend it as much as I can. But there is not much you can do. We were at the car dealers the other day looking at the car and the dealer kept ignoring her and her wishes. He was only looking at me and assumed she doesn't know what she is talking about. We just left. I've recently really opened my partner's eyes to this and now he realizes just how much it happens. Not just to me but to other women in his life. Just yesterday we went to look at garage door paint cause ours is old f and despite me asking all the questions the sales guy said everything to my partner and didn't even look at me except to give me the pamphlets with all the colors in them. My blood boils when I hear it. What is especially annoying is when we are buying something like garage paint and I get caught up with work so she does all the research for brand, color scheme, durability etc. And the dude from the store keeps asking me and reverting the convo back to me. Like I don't know dude ask her wtf I'm just the moral support in this purchase. Not being able to get sterilized when you're 100 million percent sure you don't want kids. PMS and cycle in general. I have endometriosis. Terrible genetics. And my husband and I don't want children. Getting an IUD was still a pain in the ass. Why must women suffer to avoid being even temporarily infertile? Did anyone mention the pregnancy can make all your teeth fall out thing yet? Because that's gotta be up there. I'm sorry what? Sup, if you ever get pregnant. Or want to get pregnant and are trying. Start taking the pregnancy vitamins plus extra calcium supplements right away. Apparently babies zap these from the mothers like crazy. A friend of mine was told to continue taking extra pregnancy vitamins and extra calcium supplements for a full year post birth. Apparently it's really common that once all the extra hormones and vitamins disappear from your body after pregnancy, you start losing a lot of stuff at once. Hair falls out. Teeth either develop many cavities or simply fall out as well. Skin just decides it wants to be 13 again etc. The extra time. Energy and money that must be spent to look professional. I sometimes try to throw my hands up and say fuck it. Let them think I'm ugly. And I stop plucking my eyebrows for a while. No macup, etc. And I'm treated noticeably different. Ugh this is so damn true. My boyfriend just won't believe when I tell him if I don't do my makeup, hair and look put together I get treated so much worse than if I do. He insists it's just my idea, yet any woman knows this is the reality we live in. Prolapse. I was properly shocked when I learned about this surprisingly somewhat common side effect from childbirth eater. For those who don't know, cause I sure as hell didn't. Some women will have their organs start falling out of their vaginas following childbirth. Especially older women, and especially after multiple pregnancies without proper physio in between. But not always. Pregnancy consequences in general. Pregnancy is scary. I've decided not to have kids and some of it stems from absolute terror at all the stuff that can happen because of it. Everything about pregnancy has freaked me out since I had the talk. And I'm almost 25 and married now and it still makes me super uncomfortable. Our families worry I joke about not wanting kids because I don't want to be a mom. When in reality I'm just terrified of the growing and birthing process. I'd much much rather adopt. My daughter will be one year old next week. Her mother's hands got so swollen during pregnancy that she still does not have full feeling back in one of her hands. Even after a year of acupuncture and doctor visits. My inability to get sterilized. I do not want children. I never have. 
Never will. I will never have children to please a partner. If a partner wants children, they are not the one for me. I want to be sterilized, so I have a very 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 minimal chance of getting pregnant. But I cannot do it, because I'm too young. I'll change my mind. My partner might want kids, etc. It shouldn't be this hard for me to make a choice on my own body, but I'm sure about. Anyone over 18 can sign up for the military, vote, drive, etc. The government really needs to make up their mind on whether or not 18 is considered an adult or not. Nearly every safety invention is designed for the average man. Airbags. Seatbelts. Dosages for drugs. Safety bars on roller coasters. Etc. Look. I know we can't all custom order cars with different sized belts and bags. ETC. But women can sustain serious injuries because safety features aren't meant for them. This is why I always complain about seat belts that literally chafe the side of my neck. Like. I get in an accident, and I'm going to be choked probably or at least bruised and chafed at minimum. And I'm not even a short woman. So I dk why I have this problem so often. At 5 foot 0 inches. I'm at risk of decapitation, if I'm the driver in a collision, because the airbag pops out of the steering wheel with such force, that a short person, under 5 feet 2 which usually this also means female, will have their head popped off like flower off a stem. This is a known issue. Known. I've been driving like a gangster, since I've had a car with an airbag, seat laid back, one hand on the wheel, body cocked to the side, I end up with hip pain on long drives. But at least I won't have my head ripped off by a safety feature in the event of an airbag release. Medical conditions going untreated, because they are all dismissed as anxiety, the new hysteria, or related to hormones. A neurologist tried to tell me unexplained episodes of body numbness cold and possibly be the migraines the ear doctor suspected and treated effectively, but must be anxiety. I said that would be very unusual given that I had no anxiety before or during these episodes. Apparently I can be not anxious and magically cause a physical symptom with the magical power of anxiety, even when I have no anxiety. I've also been told anxiety caused my food allergies. Very little medical research has been done on women. Which is why so few women with autism or at ETC get diagnosed. But it also means we get given wrong doses of medications and painkillers are not as effective because they've all been tested on men. Honestly the the whole medical system we have is so misogynistic. I spoke to an ex-anti-vaxxer and she said the thing that pushed her to alternative medicine was the absolute failure for conventional medicine to help her with the severe issues she'd been having.